Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's. Welcome to you if you're online with us as we come together on Palm Sunday. I just want to check before we begin whether everybody's got a cross, palm cross, fantastic. If you haven't, just raise your hand. And then we've got um, a cross and a yellow envelope. Now these are our old gift envelopes. We're recycling them. So you don't need to fill your name and address, put any money in. If you want to give money, there are buckets over there, but we're using them for a little different purpose. So if you've not got one of these, if you could raise your hand. Fantastic. Our team this morning have done really well in giving those out. Those will all be relevant in a little while. At the end of the service, we have got our special tots and dots tomorrow. And um, if you could spare us five minutes, we don't need all the furniture out, but Catherine will give some guidance. We need some tables off the stage, some chairs, and a couple of items. Uh, Catherine and I will be here later to do the rest because it is a different style tots and dots as we have nursery and tots and dots here. But we could do it a little bit of help after the service. So it's not quite the normal, um, but Catherine will lead us in that. And there'll be tea and coffees after service. So let's take hold of our cross. And we've got some words of prayer and welcome. So these crosses, as I say to the children in school, are not the sword. And if you take them apart, you'll never put them back together. But they've been made for us. And these came from Africa. So we always try and buy them from somewhere where we can connect with that. So They've been made a while ago. Today, we meet to remember that triumphal journey into Jerusalem. Churches all around the world will be gathering to do the same. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
the whole city were stirred and came together to bless God. We long for our cities, towns, and villages to unite in a similar fashion. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The whole city took part in the celebrations, improvising as they went, cutting palms and spreading cloaks. May we be open to share what our Lord needs from us, to celebrate as a gathered community. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we're going to join together in song as the team leads us this morning. And we start with Praise is Rising. Every 
every sunrise hope shines through for your mercy we thank you we come to you with a song of praise for your love and music of our soul's delight brought with love we come to you with a song of praise for your love to you, all provision comes from you, in every rhythm we thank you for your love, all creation looks to you, all provision comes from you, in every rhythm we thank you for your love, all creation looks to you, all provision comes from you, in every rhythm we thank you for your love, all creation
everything you've done is just and true. Holy, holy God are you. 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 Let's just pause for a moment. We've sung about a holy God. And I think he just wants us to spend a moment enjoying his presence. And maybe in your mind, there's something you want to thank him for. This is the moment just to say that to him. Thank him for who he is and what he's done for his faithfulness. Lord, we just really want to pause and give you the glory, the honor. We thank you that you are our amazing God who love us dearly. And as we journey towards the cross at this Easter time, we do so with thankful hearts that the price has been paid, the sacrifice has been done, and that life eternal is now. And we thank you. And so we pray, God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take your seats. So we have a fantastic opportunity to serve our local community on Saturday. I was thinking, which, which day am I in? Where am I? Uh, so, Holy Saturday, it's called, at 2 o'clock, that we will meet here, and we have, as churches together, bought lots of many Easter eggs to give away. And rather than going up to Cambly and join the rest of the churches together, I said, what about if we went to the Frimley Road? Now, you might go, well, what are we going to say? Would you like an Easter egg? Happy Easter. Oh, where are you from? Oh, St. Mary's. And then let's see where the conversation goes. It doesn't need to go anywhere. But boy, do people need to know that we care. That in the world that we live in, that someone cares. So at the moment, I'm on my list. I'd love a few more people to join me. It's been in the notices and maybe you've gone, oh, I'm not quite sure what this is about. Egg, hello, happy Easter, as easy as that, yeah? And I just love us to do it. I've not done it here before. It used to happen years ago in this church. But if we're going to bless our community, why not do it on that day and give them an Easter egg? The eggs haven't cost us anything. Churches together have paid for it. And uh, they'll be doing it in the town. They'll be doing some other things as well. So if you think, no, I don't want to do Frimley Road, I want to do town, then it's High Cross. But we'd love us to do it here, and that would be great. On Tuesday, um, I'm going to the cathedral, 10 o'clock, to, there are some paintings that are the Stations of the Cross, the Journey of Jesus. And um, I just thought it'd be great that if you'd like, anybody's around want to join me, then 10 o'clock at the cathedral. Um, but some of us might have room in cars to take other people. If you're going, I'd love to know. Otherwise, it's me on my own, and I'll be waiting. I'd just like to know who's coming. The idea is to walk around, spend some time, just reflecting in our own thoughts mainly, then go and grab a coffee, and let's just share what we saw. And then the option to go back, walk again, or go home 
It's as simple as that. But I thought, while somebody's created these things, I can't get them here, but we can go there. And I thought, it's a way of just walking the journey of the cross in a different way. I recommend you might, if you're a drawer, to bring a sketch pad. If you journal, just take a, a pen and a pad just to see what these images spark in you about the story of Jesus. Um, so that's Tuesday. Um, so I'd love to know if you are coming then. And you're welcome to join us at the Cathedral again on Thursday, 11 o'clock, where those of us who are ordained will be renewing our vows, but everyone's welcome. It's a fantastic service. And then with Alpha, um, we're running Alpha with, well, some barbers are running Alpha and we can join them. Now, I would love you to start inviting people or having conversations Daring to say, just come and explore. It's food, it's questions answered, it's conversations. Now, the person who's the latest person who did Alpha in this church would be Abby. And if you want to know what, what it means, ask her. Abby didn't know Jesus, did it online, now knows Jesus. That's what it's about. Now, if somebody says, oh, they've said no before, just ask again. Pray, Lord, I'm going to ask. If they say no, it doesn't matter. You've asked. That's the simple thing. God asks us to be faithful in the asking. We're not responsible for the reply. All right? If you've never done Alpha, recommend doing it because it stirs faith. Those of us did it last time here and at St. Barbara's, just revigorated our faith and I still think the um, the pandemic has still left a scar on us in us and it is a, a lovely way of doing that and we volunteered to cook for one of the meals they said two and oh I can do one I'm not sure whether I could do two so we'll talk about it a little bit later there's lots of other things in the notice those are the three things I really just wanted to highlight there is lots of things happening here over Easter. And Good Friday, I need, I think it was eight readers. If you're willing to read, um, we'll be in a semicircle here, and it's a reflective service. I have those readings here after service. Just grab me, and we can do that. I want to, just to with our Barnabas slot, is to do something slightly different. What are you thankful for God for? And I, I'm going to kick off because I think that's an encouragement. So yesterday morning at half past nine, Catherine, Esther, Henry, her boyfriend, and I were going to take my mum out to lunch. We sat at a set of traffic lights and a car went into the back of us. Another car went into the back of that one. And there were another four cars somewhere else or so. We're all fine. The cars are a little bit of a mess. And it was really interesting to watch how we responded. And if you ask us much, we are still emotional and probably physically trying to work out what did happen. But I watched the reaction of Catherine. She's an extrovert, so she says all her thoughts externally. So wanted to know how everybody else was and to get the car out the middle of the road, which we were in the middle of the road. Then told to road, ring 99, which I did. So we did have the police out, we had highways to clear the road. And then to connect with a 21 year, 20 year old who then phoned her dad, a lady who, who probably caused the accident and all those emotions, all the stress, the other four cars were further up, they kind of worked themselves out. But the three of us then just worked out through that. My sadness was at that moment, we've been planning this for ages, trying to get our diaries together to take Esther and Henry to see my, my mother, who's in her um, mid 80s. 
taken out for lunch. She was treating us. We've got it booked, had it booked months, thinking this is not possible. And so in the middle of that, we then started the conversations, is it possible? And we wanna, I want to thank God this morning because one, that we're protected. Two, that we still were able to do ministry, the service of God to the other people. That you kind of become bonded because of an accident in the trauma, that sense of, and there are emails going around this morning. And that's really bizarre, isn't it? To then watch my car go off and it'll get repaired and looking at it, the exhaust is coming out the side and at the back and you kind of, but the airbags didn't go off. We replaced our car when I could with a car that I th thought was going to keep us safe in the future. The car's done everything it did, we're safe. The car was picked up at one o'clock. The accident happened at half nine. Just gone one o'clock, about quarter past, in Esther's car. Her boyfriend drove us to and back to Birmingham. We took my mother out. We drove her in her car, because that's got three. We can get three in the back. She was gracious and patient. My mum panics. We had a wonderful lunch. Yes, we got back. It was about 11 o'clock last night. But in it, I just see God's hand in that we were safe, that we were able to be with my mum and she was chatty. And that Henry was the gift to us because I couldn't keep my eyes open and he drove. God is good. It didn't quite feel like it all the time. Our brains were whizzing around, but that's the bit just had a text that somebody else has had car problems in the church yesterday. So I think this week, as you begin to travel, we need to pray for protection, the Holy God to protect us. But who else? What's God be doing in you? We also had a text from a congregation member whose daughter passed us and waved and said, can't stop, are you all right? So uh, God is good in bringing humor to our lives as well. So what's God been doing in your lives that you would like to thank him for? Matilda, new grandma. Good morning, everybody. Okay, try again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm third time grandma, <laughs> grandson. Uh, I, before my daughter got married, there was a time I was a little bit stressed that you don't even care to even bring a friend home. She said, mom, don't worry. I don't know your boyfriend said, don't worry. There was a day she asked me a question. Do you know Susu -so family? I said, well, I had the name, but I don't know anybody there. After a while, she didn't say anything. And when Doyi, the husband now, came, I watched, I said, they have similar things they both like. You know, I just watched, it's like they are twins or they are siblings, you know, the way they talk and they are, the way they do things. After the marriage, she was a bit panicked that, oh, I want to get pregnant immediately. Mommy prayed for me. I, well, we started praying. By the time she got pregnant, she didn't even tell me. They were in Dubai. They were about to go to Dubai on holiday. She said, mom, do you know what? I'm pregnant. I said, oh, why did you wait? Don't go and stress yourself, she said, no. Anyway, to cut the long story short, she did scan, God confirmed, the says baby, everybody were happy. And um, on the day, three days before the delivery, she broke the water. She went, it, there was no dilation. We, we went back again, they did scan, there was the one day we were in business talk, um, emergency because she was having leg pain. We were there for over three hours. I left her, she came home. The husband went to pick her up. So now she, she couldn't find in labor and the water kept on draining. Then she went to the maternity again. Then I said, she can't stay in business, so she has to go to Winchester. We were in Winchester since morning, no dilation, no dilation. 
and then they started induction. Got to stage, the heartbeat of the baby was up and down. Or else heartbeat also up and down. Then they decided to do emergency cesarean section. It was so, you know, you know, for somebody seeing even before she, she, the cesarean section was accepted, it was decided. I was already panicking out. I've never had labor long time like this. But to God be the glory. The baby came out fine. Everything about mother and baby fine. Up till now, the baby no concern. Is drinking well, eating well. No problem with the baby and no problem with the mother. I'm so grateful to Almighty God. This is a, a church that God answers prayer. Because I've never been to any other church since I've been coming here. I center my mind to talk to God, source from this church, and God is really, really answering my prayer. And I praise God for all he has been doing in my life. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, everybody, for your love for my family in this church. I appreciate you all. Thank you. From singleness to marriage, marriage to baby, baby safe delivery, wow. Jack. I started um, a new job four weeks ago at Thorpe Park and um, I was very um, nervous and I've been worried about how I've been doing over the last four weeks. Um, on Friday, I was given the employee of the month certificate and um, early, later on in the afternoon, I was also given the duty manager star of the award, star of the day award. Um, which entitles me to go to the Star Ball in February, which is a black tie event. Um, but talking about God and going through at work, we've got um, some of my colleagues are from different religions and we've been having conversations this week, which is really good. And talking about each other's religions, which is really good. Fantastic. And in, uh, when we were in small group, Joe was feeling really nervous, so we prayed that there would be good outcomes, which is great to hear. Like, uh, I would like to say uh, this would be my last church, and I'm going away for Easter. I want to say thank you to God for everything, and uh, I'm grateful for my family, and have a cracking Easter. And you're coming back though, aren't you? Yes, yes good. Anybody else? It was just a little thing that really cheered me up. I was feeling, I've not been well for a couple of months and I was still feeling sick and I had to walk my dog and I walked out the house going, oh God, I've not done all of these things I was wanting to do, all these things I've committed to do. And I was feeling really frustrated and I was kind of thinking, oh. and then I heard a couple of lads walking down the road and they were laughing and that just kind of made me smile, you know, a couple of young men. Stopped to say hello to my dog. And then just randomly, one of them gave me a huge bunch of daffodils and said, Happy Easter. Oh. So it was just, I mean, it makes me think of the Easter egg things that we're planning to do. And it just really cheered me up. <laughs> what a testament, isn't it, to about generosity, random generosity. Praise God. Anybody else? I think it's just doing that with Barnabas. So what are we thankful for? Sometimes we don't do anything on this, but I think just God does those things. What are we grateful for? So we have birthdays. We have a few. Mike's birthday was yesterday. He's with his son in Cambridge. It's Catherine's dad, Peter's birthday today. He's in Cambridge too, due back today. Paul, uh, no. Karen, your mum's birthday today. Her name's Barbara. Have I remember right? Good. Good. So it's Barbara's birthday. Eric, do you want to go to the piano? Anybody else's birthday? This coming Wednesday? Fantastic. Okay, so that's the 13th, is it, of April? 12th. Okay, near. Good. Anybody else? Sorry, who? Some of your housemates. 
when we sing it, just have to tell them we've sung happy birthday to them. Here, here we go. Happy birthday to you. I'm going to step back for a moment. Three things are going to happen, one after the other. We're going to watch a clip about Dan the donkey. Then Melvin's coming to read the story that we're thinking about today of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. And then Sue is going to come and talk to us. So first, Dan the donkey. Dan was a small donkey with big dreams. He lived in a little village called Bethphage at the foot of a mountain not far from Jerusalem. Most of the time he was happy, playing with the other young donkeys who were turned out into the field with him. They chased each other about, kicking up the dust under the trees, or, in the hottest part of the day, they lay down in the shade and flicked the flies off each other with their tails. But Dan was the smallest of all the young donkeys in the village, being the youngest. And he was always being teased for it, especially when he wondered out loud about the things he dreamed for his future. Dan would often stand at the edge of the field and gaze longingly as the adult donkeys were loaded up with figs from the trees, ready to sell at the markets. Ah, he would say to his friends. One day, I'm going to be just like them and carry heavy, heavy loads to market. Just you wait and see. One day soon. <coughs> Other times, he would watch as families loaded up their donkeys to go on a long journey, maybe to visit friends or relatives in another town, and say, <coughs> One day, maybe I'll have a really important job to do just like that. <coughs> One day, you wait and see. All the other young donkeys would raise their eyes and shake their heads. You'd rather be doing all that work than be here with us playing in the fields? What a loser you are, Dan. You're the smallest of all of us. You'll never be good at anything. And so, eventually, Dan stopped dreaming out loud, and as time went by, he even began to believe that what his friend said might be true. Maybe he was too small and insignificant to do anything useful. Change his life forever. It was the week before Passover, and the whole village was buzzing with the preparations for this important celebration. Dan had been tied up with his mother outside the little house where his family lived. He was feeling particularly fed up because he just didn't seem to be growing up fast enough to do anything useful. As he stood by the house, his head hanging down sadly, two men rushed up and began to untie him. For a moment, he was too startled to think what was happening. But before he could say anything, his owner had appeared at the doorway and was asking the two men what they were doing. Jesus, the master, needs him, was all the men replied, which seemed to be enough of an answer because Dan's owner let them lead him away. What were they going to do with him? He was far too small and unimportant to be doing anything out of the ordinary, especially today. He looked nervously around at his mother, who whispered gently to him, Go on, Dan. You can do whatever the master asks of you. For the first time in a long while, Dan felt a little bubble ripple inside him, as if his dreams maybe weren't going to be dreams for much longer. Could this be the same Jesus he had heard people in the village talking about? He was about to find out. The two men 
led him just outside the village, where the master, as the men had called him, was waiting. So this was the Jesus he had heard so much about, and he could see why people were so desperate to meet him. Jesus had kind eyes, and he reached out his hand to stroke Dan's nose, as if he had known him his whole life long. A shiver of excitement ran through the little donkey, from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail. The two men with Jesus placed their cloaks on Dan's back for Jesus to sit on, and the journey began. Strangely enough, Dan didn't really notice that he had something quite heavy on his back. He was prouder than he'd ever been before, and just went wherever Jesus wanted him to go. At the edge of the village, just before the descent into Jerusalem, Dan couldn't help but gasp in amazement at the view he saw. Jerusalem was such a big, big place, and oh, so beautiful, with the roofs of the houses glistening in the sunlight. As they got nearer to the city, the crowds began to get bigger, and when people saw Jesus coming on the little donkey, they stopped to make a pathway. Some of them laid their cloaks down on the dusty road for Dan to walk on. Others tore branches down from the palm trees growing by the side of the road. And then they began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the king who comes in God's name! Hosanna! And they waved their palm branches high in the air. At that moment, Dan realized that this was what he had been waiting for all his life. This was his important job, and it was more important than any job that any other donkey would ever be asked to do. Jesus, the master, the king, was coming to Jerusalem on his back. And with a whoop of joy like he'd never felt before, Dan let out his own Hosanna. Need to do this lesson, but there we are. <laughs> Our reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make come true what the prophet had said. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise be to God! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? the people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The tribes answered, This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. 
Before I begin, I know there were a few people that came in um, a little bit late. Has everybody got, got a cross and an envelope? DJ. Denise, have you got some there? Has everybody else got one? Good. You don't need them yet. I will explain all. So may the spoken and written word lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So my question this morning is why a donkey? I was amused. I was listening to that clip again and I said to Ian, I don't know why Dan the donkey's got a Somerset accent. It seemed very bizarre for a Bible story, but there you go. Why a donkey? Donkey seems like such a small character in today's story, but perhaps we might say that he or she was one of the main characters with a big story to tell. Some might think that a king would arrive in a chariot, or if they were going to ride, at least they would ride a stallion with gold embellishments. The people of the day were indeed expecting and looking forward to greeting a totally different kind of king to the one that arrived in Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. They were expecting a powerful king who would release them from captivity. And they anticipated greeting somebody who they expected would arrive with great pomp and ceremony. So why on earth did Jesus choose to ride such a lowly creature as a humble donkey? Well, the first reason was that it was there to fulfill prophecy. The Jewish people had been brought up reading the Old Testament prophets, so they would have learnt what they should be looking out for, even if they did miss it on that day to start off with. We read in Zechariah 9.9, a part of the Bible the Jews would have been brought up reading, Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So this is exactly what Jesus was meant to do. He was meant to ride in on a donkey. The second reason is that when horses are mentioned in the Bible, they're almost always in relation to kings and war. But when donkeys who are smaller and more cautious than horses are mentioned, it's usually in relation to common people for the purpose of agriculture or trade. And in the ancient biblical world, a leader rode on a horse if they were going to war, but they would use a donkey to signify peace or at the time of enacting treaties. We read in 1 Kings 1 when Solomon was made king, so Zadok, Nathan, Benaiah and the royal bodyguards put Solomon on King David's mule or donkey and escorted him to Gion Spring. Zadok took the container of olive oil which he had brought from the tent of the Lord's presence and anointed Solomon. They blew the trumpet and all the people shouted, long live King Solomon. So like Jesus, Solomon rode a donkey to signify peace and a sign of humility to the people. So Jesus' choice of a donkey signified that he was coming into Jerusalem in peace. By riding on a donkey, he showed that he came to bring grace and not judgment. But it's also significant that Jesus rode a colt, which is a young and untrained donkey. Normally, it would be incredibly difficult for someone to ride an unbroken animal like this, especially through a crowd and chaos. But Jesus managed to keep the donkey under control. Indeed, he's the creator of the world. And the third reason, and for me, this is probably the most important reason of all, Jesus used the donkey to connect with the common people. Life wasn't easy for a Jew living in the first century, 
And it was even worse for those that were poor or disadvantaged. But Jesus embraced the poor and he embraced the sick people during his time on earth. And his choice of a donkey instead of a horse was his way of saying that he came as a king who would serve and save the oppressed. If we think of a donkey, what comes to mind? As a child, I can remember loving the donkeys on the beach, and I'm sure lots of you can remember the donkeys on the beach. They were such patient, kind, plodding creatures. Every day they carried excited children up and down the beach on their backs, never complaining, always gentle, quietly doing what they were there to do. I am sure they were noisy at times, but that's not what I remember. And I also think of the adverts on TV for Save the Donkey and various donkey sanctuaries, showing pictures of defenseless, harmless donkeys who've been hard done by. And did you know that donkeys actually do have a cross on their back as well? If you look at them from the top, you can see the, the black bit down their back and then the, the bits of the cross going down each shoulder. I'd like to think that by choosing a donkey, the message Jesus was sharing for today was an even bigger and perhaps more significant one. The donkey wasn't a sign of wealth or prestige. The donkey was not a sign of being upper class or more intelligent. The donkey was a simple creature. Think what we mean when we say someone is being a bit of an ass. We mean they're being stupid. I think Jesus chose the donkey exactly for that reason. In comparison to all the extravagance and bravado of a stallion, a donkey was more like a poor cousin than nothing. Yet he was being given the most prestigious job to do. He was chosen to carry a king on his back and not just any king, he was carrying the King of Kings, the Messiah. How many of us today feel inferior when we compare ourselves to other people? How many of us, when we look at other people, put them on a pedestal? How many of us feel like a donkey while everyone else around us looks like a stallion? Do we see other people as being far better than us more intelligent, more worthy of being noticed. You see, all this is holding us back. I wonder what needs to be untied in our lives so that we can praise and honor God. What thoughts and ideas and misconceptions do we need to let go of? When we allow them to be untied and let go, Nothing can stop the love of God and neighbor that is inside us from flowing out to those around us. Palm Sunday is the day when we, like Jesus' animal companion, are set loose to be used for the work of God. Apostle Paul tells the Corinthian Christians, God deliberately chose men and women that society overlooks and exploits and abuses. He chooses nobodies. God purposely chooses what the world considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. He chooses what the world considers weak in order to shame the powerful. God is in the purpose of choosing these people who seem like the least likely candidates in order to fulfill his great plans and purposes for the world. Can I have my next slide please, Ian? Do we recognize this donkey? <laughs> Shrek's donkey, isn't it? Yeah. There's a poem by Chesterton, which goes like this. When fishes flew and forests walk and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born with monstrous head and sickening cry and ears like errant wings the devil's walking parody on all four-footed things, the tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, starve, scow, deride me, I am dumb, I keep my secret still. Fools, for I also had my hour, 
One far fierce hour and sweet, there was a shout about my ears and palms before my feet. And I think for me in the story of Shrek, probably the donkey was also the hero. You see, God can use even that which has a self-esteem so low and that person which everyone and everyone, everything else completely dismisses as ugly, ludicrous, useless, unimportant, and so on and so forth. So let's go back to a statement I made at the beginning. Why a donkey? On the surface, the donkey seems to have such a small part to play in the story such an insignificant, unassuming, not very intelligent animal surely couldn't be that important. But sometimes it's just this type of animal or person that God might choose to use to be the main character in his story. I'm sure there are many of us here today who can identify with the donkey. Do we allow our knots, our doubts to tie us in knots? Do we allow our opinion of ourselves or things that people might have said about us or to us limit what we're doing for God or prevent us from even trying in the first place? Just like Palm Sunday was the day when that little donkey was untied from the post to be used to carry Jesus into Jerusalem, it's also the day for us to be untied from our false thoughts about our uselessness from comparing ourselves to others, from thinking we're not good enough for Jesus to use us, thinking we don't have anything else to offer that would be of any use. I want to share a quick story with you. Once there was a great forest fire. All the animals fled to the edge of the forest and froze in fear, not knowing what to do. They watched as the flames began destroying the beauty of their home. Finally, a tiny hummingbird flew to a body of water and took a few drops in its beak. It then flew quickly towards the flame, allowing the drops to fall on the roaring flames. Over and over, the tiny bird continued, drop by drop, back and forth, again and again. The other animals watched from the edge of the forest and called to the little bird, what are you doing? And the hummingbird replied, I'm doing what I can. So today is the day that we can start doing what we can, no matter how small it might seem. I'm going to come to a time now where you will need your cross and your envelope. I think God's saying to us that today is an opportunity to have a new start, a new life. Are there things about yourself that you believe that are lies? Have people told you something that you've, you've carried on in life thinking is true, but it's not in God's eyes? It's not true. Are there things that are preventing you from doing the work that God would like you to do? What I'd like us to do is take the cross, pray, write on the cross those things that you believe about yourself, things you might be angry about, lies you might have been told, doubts you have. Write them on the cross and then fold it up, put it in the envelope and seal it. And I invite you to bring them forward and there's a basket at the foot of the cross. Let's leave them in the basket at the foot of the cross. I promise you nobody will open the envelopes, nobody will look at them, nobody will have any idea what you've written. During the week we plan to shred these envelopes and then we're going to burn them. And then next Sunday morning we're going to use those ashes as part of our Easter service. So let's just take a time of quiet and when you're ready, come and bring your cross with your doubts, your fears and lay them at the foot of the cross.
1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, But the Lord said to him, Pay no attention to how tall and handsome he is. I have rejected him because I do not judge as people judge. They look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. So we've laid our fears and our doubts and the lies at the foot of the cross and there's a beautiful prayer that goes like this today we empty ourselves of all anger fear 
self-pity, doubt, jealousy, worry, discouragements, disappointment, sadness, unhappiness, selfishness, insecurity, anxiety, disappointment, coldness, callousness, insensitivity. Today, we have emptied ourselves of all tears. Having emptied ourselves, we now refill ourselves with peace, power, prosperity, wisdom, insight, knowledge, love, warmth, friendship, living, learning, laughing, caring, sharing, helping, forgiving, accepting, and affirming. Today we fill ourselves with God's abundance. Amen. So our response now is, we're going to stand and sing again. The Lord's my shepherd. So when we write things down and express something of ourself, the Lord comes and restores us. And then we'll sing, what a beautiful name, that it takes us from ourself back to him, because he's the one who restores. And then I'll lead us in our intercessions.
song. I just sense, let's not move on to other songs. Let's just hold this phrase. The Lord is my shepherd, he restores my soul. So me this morning, the Lord is taking away the things that have stopped you being who you've called to be. For some of you, the Lord wants to give you the good gifts. And you're just sensing, Lord, want me? I'm like that donkey. I'm like the ugly swan. And the Lord says, yes, I come to give you goodness I come with mercy and grace I come that you may know my love for some of you you're tired some of you are broken and the Lord says I come to restore you for some of you that brokenness is ill health the Lord says, I'm here. I'm here. I encourage you to take your seats as we move into our intercessions. There is prayer ministry after service. Please come. I think it's Sally and Jones today, and they'll be at the front to to rest coming to be prayed for, that God will meet with you. He wants to restore us. In our time of prayer, there will be plenty of pauses for us to name people known to us. I encourage you to name them in the quiet of your hearts or out loud. Lord, we pray for those who are in our news today. And Lord, we want to bring you particular situations that have caught our attention. The places where there is war and hatred, injustice, places of sadness, places where the planet Earth has grown and affected communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for us as a church community, our life together and our witness to the world. We pray for this coming week. And particularly as we go out to the Frimley Road and want to bless others. Lord, may we share your goodness. May it just overflow out of us. That others may know 
that you love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we pause as we, we pray for those that we met in the last day or so. Maybe a significant conversation. Maybe there are people who you are worried about in your family, in your friendship groups. Again, name them to the Lord now. Lord, you know who they are. You know our worries and concerns. Lord, we pray for your presence and intervention. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are coping with the stress at work, at home, or in life generally. Pray for the challenging times that we're living through. And we pray for our communities our workplaces, our neighbours. Lord, pray for your mercy and your grace. That somehow, Lord, that through these times we may come together rather than to be separate. We pray for those charities that were hard to meet those in need. Particularly we pray this morning for the work of Bisam. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the things we've been able to celebrate and give thanks for this morning. But we pray for those who are waiting for something important, whether that's a hospital appointment, a word of encouragement, a job, a visit. For those who are feeling lonely, longing for love and friendship, Lord, we just bring to you those who are waiting for something important. Hear their prayer, hear their longing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for those who are unwell, whether in body, mind, or spirit. Particularly pray for those who are grieving. And Lord, in your mercy and your grace, we pray for your blessing upon them, that you'll meet them, that they'll know your healing, your love, that you are with them. Thank you, Lord, that you meet us today. Meet with them, we pray. Most merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're switching things around, I'm conscious of time. Um, I'm going to finish with a prayer of commissioning, and we'll sing a hymn. And then, I, if the band are okay, there's a couple more songs that I'd love you to sing over us. As we, some of you may need to go, we grab a coffee. You know, there's some beautiful music here. And I think that will set a backdrop for those who would like to just pause and stay, and those who are looking for prayer. So we'll go straight to the commission. Take this home with you. Remember that the Lord is going to be with you this week. Loving God, the crosses remind us why you came to Jerusalem. Hosanna in the highest. The banner reminds us to praise your name. Hosanna in the highest. We will not be silent. The cross will be held high and we will praise you and tell your story. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So our final hymn before those other songs come is All Glory, Lord, and Honour which is a triumphant song, reminds us that God deserves the glory. As I say, prayer ministry is here. There'll be more songs that will be sung. Do stay, do go for coffee, and uh, it will be a time for that ministry.